Don't be loud. <laughs> Uh, well, joining us now on the Same Old Stripes podcast, uh, you know him from his four seasons with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, he has 4,871 career receiving yards, uh, 27 receiving touchdowns, four passing touchdowns along the way. Uh, a man who's done a lot on the football field, also doing a lot of cool stuff off the football field, but he's uh, working on a new community center in his native Sierra Leone with his mom. We'll tell you more about that as we kind of go on here, but you also know him from stops with the Falcons, the Patriots, the 49ers. Uh, did some a couple little time with the Lions, a little time with the Dolphins. Most of you, it's great to talk to you. You're on the same old Stripes podcast. How's your night going, man? It's great to connect with you. Oh, uh, it's great. I'm doing awesome. Glad I'm able to spend some time with you guys and came over, spent some time. Uh, the family came over to the chiropractor, but like, it's like, man, I would love to get on this podcast with Willie. And, I'm glad we were able to make this work and just, you know, just talk about what's going on and in the life of Mouse and 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 you guys. <laughs> well, yeah, Mo is coming to us from living the dad life. He's living good right now at the chiropractor, like he said, um, and he's awfully busy. He's uh, he's definitely uh, not slowing down as he gets older. Uh, not that any of us are at this point, but uh, uh, one of the things that he's got going on that's really really cool is. He is starting a community center in Sierra Leone with his mom. Um, it's a community that could really, really use it. It's going to provide them a ton of resources that that community would not otherwise have. But, I mean, I'll give you a chance to kind of give Bengals fans the background on it because, I mean, we were talking about it before, but it just seems like such a cool mission and such a cool opportunity. Well, yeah, it's um, something my mom's actually been working on for a while now. And um, I've been doing a lot a lot to help out but i was like you know what i mean i know played in the league for a long time and i got, got a lot of fans that i know that would would love to actually be a part of it if we're gonna make it something public and have have them have have necessarily a say in how you know other people's lives you know change like if you're able to even do some small donation or just like there's always gonna be something that you doing in the long run that you never know how it's gonna affect somebody. So I figure like, man, why not why not use my platform and and let everybody know like this is what I'm doing outside of football. Like I know you guys see me as as Muhammad Sanu football player who's done this, that and the third, but I want you all to see where I come from and how I was able to who I am because of you know my lucky unfortunate my fortunate circumstances of my mom doing what she did to make sure you know I, I was able to have the life I have in America like but certainly you know, not a lot of people have that like like I told you guys earlier like we were able to have this this call all over the different parts of America we're all in different states and like and there People can't even have access to internet or to do any research to, to learn any artifacts or, you know, necessary information they need to educate themselves to further their life or their education or their practice or whatever they want to study. And it's just like, like to be able to help help just the small town community. You, can, you don't you don't know what what potential lies there as far as you know doctors, lawyers, or you know scientists that may find a cure to change whatever but they don't have the necessarily resources to tap into that field so it's just trying to i'm like okay like what what's what's the necessary that's what's the way i could use my platform is to get every any person to donate whether it's five bucks or ten dollars or whatever the case may be yeah and i think that's such a cool part of this whole thing is I mean, you're gonna I'm going to let you set this up later, but Bengals fans can definitely be a part of this and you can put them in in some capacity and definitely help some people that really, you know, need access to resources, you know, stuff that we take for granted every day. You know, we can mm -hmm. get online and you can get all these different books and all these different things that, uh, you know, this community just could really use. So uh, from your perspective, have you gotten a chance to get out there and just see how excited everyone is? Or have you heard their reaction well, to just how excited this is, you know, this is or how much anticipation this much has? them yeah yeah i talked to my mom every day about it um i haven't actually been over in Sierra Leone in about four years 
not an easy place to travel to. Um, so it's been, I would say, like four years since I've been over there. But even then, that's when she necessarily was starting the building process of it, which showed me like what she was going to do. So it's just been a long time. Coming. We're almost at the final stages of, of what she wants to accomplish or what she wants to get done. Like we lost connection there for a second. Oh, we got him back now. Bo can you hear us. Oh, there we go. So, little baby girl, she she over there. She happy we getting in the car. She don't like that. <laughs> but well, she gets to make her, her podcast appearance. Yeah, but go ahead. Mama got to in the back. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, good. But like I was saying, to be able to have something like that in a community like that is just gonna gonna have so many kids that would wouldn't able wouldn't be able to have access to computer labs, to books, to a certain things that would be able to provide for them in this community center with the help of everybody that is is across the world. It doesn't t- it takes it takes everybody to, to raise a community or raise, you know, a village like like I know growing up where I'm like growing up in Jersey and I was I would always be over all my friends and family's houses and spending time with them and I wouldn't be the person I was, I am today without, you know, a lot of the relationships that I've built over the years. And that's, I mean, that's the same thing that goes along the lines of like, a lot of people wouldn't, like these people won't get to where they need to go without the relationships that they will be formed from people, those who help and extend a lending hand to, you know, like, it's it's something that like if you were to see it with your own eyes, you would be like, oh, okay, like I don't understand it. It's hard to put into words necessarily. Yeah, and so I, I guess my my so, next question is, where do people kind of go to find information about this? And how can they support the the new community center? Because obviously, I think the Bengals fans are obviously interested in supporting it. But uh, where can they find some information on all that? Um, I know that my. My marketing manager, um, Patrick Powell, he's put it on like my social media. Um, Develop Africa has put it on their social media, so um, you can check it out. I'll be posting about it soon. We're gonna launch a whole social media campaign and let everybody be able to to, to join in. And um, it's, we're just honestly in the beginning stages of stuff, doing all that stuff. The thing it was closed. Protein shake was going to spill all over the place. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but we're in the, the beginning stages of uh, the, getting the, the GoFundMe page running and um, just getting that campaign going so people could, uh, you know, donate and be a part of the, the, the community center because it's something my mom was saying, like, you know, like with every person that donates, their, their name can can or will be, you know, displayed within the building, on the building, whether it's in the bricks or in the plaque, or just to let them know like they're a part of, you know, a legacy that will, will be live longer than, you know, them, you know, because it's, it's just like any anything that, you know, people put into out here, like a school or, you know, that school lasts longer than a lot of us, you know what I'm saying? And, that's yeah. necessarily what you know. You know we're we're doing over there. 
That's awesome, man. Incredible mission. That's awesome, man. Uh, we'll be Incredible sharing more information on as, uh, as stuff comes out. So definitely look for stuff from me, Billy, and T.O. on our social media feed as well. Uh, we'll be posting stuff, so we'll get you all that information. Uh, Billy, you've been awfully quiet uh, Billy, over there. Quiet. Yeah, over there. <laughs> the mirror always gets you, Billy. Uh, you've been awfully quiet so far. What do you got? Uh, you've been awfully quiet so far. What do you got? I know you got. Uh, Mo, first off, thanks for joining us. Um, awesome to, uh, to hear Mo, about the mission, off, and um, um, you know, really awesome excited to, to be involved with it. And um, you know, really, you know, you know, my question really to you, Mo. Um, you know, I, I, I think to go on the football side, and, and for us Bengals fans, and and your time with us, you know, I, I'm a huge, huge proponent on, on anyone in this fan base that says, you know, that that. They really don't cherish those, those Marvin years and those Andy and AJ years. Um, you know, really have no business kind of being a part where we are now. And and I just want to know if you could talk a little bit about, you know, your time here, um, you know, what you guys built and, and how you could kind of see the, the fruit of your labor, if not, you know, within the last few years of this team. Because I, I really think culture-wise, um, you know, e even though, it may have not ended where we all wanted it to. I feel like you guys were really the turn um, of kind of pushing us in that direction of, of where we are now, because, you know, without Marvin Lewis, without guys like you, without guys like, you know, Cedric Benson, without the Jerome Simpsons of the world, without the, um, you know, AJ Greens of the world, I, I personally don't think we're sitting here now talking about the Bengals, how we are. About the Bengals, how we are. No, I agree. We, um, the Bengals, those years were great. Great years, honestly. Like people, a lot of people don't even remember those years when I talk about them. I let them know. I'm like, no, nah, those Bengals teams are some of the best teams I've been on. Like, and we have, we built a culture of, like grit and tenacity, and you know, we 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 worked hard. We 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 didn't have nothing handed to us. And we would get after it in camps and training camps and the way we practice. The, the competition level where we practice because we knew um, the players that we had on the team in order to get better we had to compete with one another and um, like we just we just didn't have you know things that go our way at the right time necessarily and it happens uh, but I mean I felt like those teams we every year I mean honest, every year we went to playoffs even though we lost the first round we still had great teams that we should have done more with, you know what I'm saying? And that's what, that was only the only downside let down with, with those teams. And like you see now, like, um, they're able to figure out with them. Cause, I mean, it's not far off. And it's, it's the Bengals, they, 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 they do a great job with how they, they build their team and a roster. It's a, it's a, it's a system. Like, if you look at over the years, and you look at the style of receivers and the style of the, you know, the quarterback, the running back, and the defense, and how it's played. Like, like they, it's a system of what they look for and how they draft them. Like, all the receivers got the same, similar builds, similar skill sets, and some of them are better than others, and but it's just, or some did better than others, and, and it's just, it's just what it is. Like, but if you look and see. Like every receiver has their skill set, or very some of them, like like T. Higg, Chris Henry, you know, they all got the same skills. Like you know what I'm saying? And, uh, AJ Green, and Jamar, similar kind of bar, like T. J. Ocho, like they all, it's all similar. Me myself, like we all have that. Like you know, it's hard to the comparison with, like, my body type and Jamar, like, running style, I guess. But, I mean, he's he's powerful, powerful runner. So, I – and I ran hard, too, so I so I understand. But, you know, he's a special talent, and we all we all had our niche, and everybody has – but you see the style, but the, the tight ends that, that they had over the years, you know, it's just the way the line – and the defensive line, and linebackers, DBs, it's just the way everything, you can just see, like, the way the teams are built, and you got the right right group, got great leaders, and you got a great quarterback in Joe Burrows, and, and that's, he has that, that factor. And 
that's the most important the main component right there a quarterback so I mean, it's easy, easy to build around somebody like, like him so I'm going to talk about you talked about the uh, different receivers skill sets. Um, I, the, I wanted to ask you about a certain skill set that you know is not popular among receivers, and that's being able to throw giant long touchdown passes. Uh, that's something that Bengals fans definitely uh, remember you for from during your time here. I, I think the one that always stands out is the one in Washington, which might have been the first one, but uh, first I'm player curious. game, baby, yeah. seventy four yards. <laughs> uh, what, how did that come to be? Did they come to you with that? Did you come to them with that? What was the conversation like when it came? Hey, Mo, we're going to need you to, you know, do one of these crazy trick plays every now and then where you're going to throw an absolute dart down the field to AJ Green. Field to AJ Green. Well, they know my, oh, at times they would take advantage of my skill set. And sometimes they wouldn't because it wasn't like it was nothing new. Like, that's always something I could do my entire life. Like, I've always been able to throw the ball, catch the ball, kick the ball, pretty much do anything on the football field. Just playing receiver is just what y'all know me to just be able to do. Like, and that's what I decided to play in the NFL. But that wasn't what – wasn't something that I always saw myself being or, like, a lot of people don't know. I went to college as a safety, and, like, that just – I switched to receiver, and now you guys are talking to me as Muhammad Sanu, the receiver. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, that's just what I did to get to where I wanted to go. But it wasn't nothing new. Like, if they asked me to do something, I'd do it. Like, they knew I could kick field goals. I can, I would kick a field goal, like, on Friday practices, just mess around, kick 50-yard field goal. They knew that. But it's like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. There wasn't nothing on the football field that I couldn't do. It's just about having an opportunity to do it. We could have used you in that jet playoff game there, boy. That, that might have helped us out. That was before his time, Billy. Yeah, I would've, I would've that was before been, his time, Billy. The rush. <laughs> the rush. I was still out arguing then. Well, T.O., you've been quiet so far on this podcast. I know that you got questions still in your head. Now that we know that Mo can do anything on the football field, in addition to being a very versatile person throughout his entire life, um, what do you have from? I'm sure that you have a great question brewing in your head too. You always got something, something fun for us. Yeah, we'll see. I want to start real quick with uh, just telling telling a little quick story. My, uh, my, I have twin brothers. They're they're 18, but they they're pretty big in the Madden scene right now. So, uh, my my brothers, one of my brothers, is really unique, and he'll always take you know a Tim Tebow and put him at quarterback, or you know. He, he takes you a lot and puts you at quarterback and he'll be in the online franchise and he'll run with you at quarterback and he dominates people. It's hilarious. But uh, uh, I just kind of wanted to ask, um, you know, your big three with you, AJ and uh, Marvin Jones, how, how would you compare it to the, the big three that the Bengals have right now with TB Higgins and uh, Chase Higgins and uh, Chase? Um, I said we're kind of similar, but different. Like, like just different skill sets and the way they utilize us. But I mean, it, like AJ is more, it's like a mixture of like T Higgs, I would say, and um, kind of Jamar with his like deep ball tracking skill. And then Marv is kind of like a mixture of T Higgs and Boyd. And I'm like a mixture of Boyd and Chase. Just my body type and my skill set. It's just like, it's weird. But like I said, like they have their, like if you look, the Bengals have the way that they look for players and like certain skill sets. They draft within those parameters and they don't miss much. Yeah, and then uh, a follow up to that would be. Um... If you could have kept that core together, you, Marv, and uh, AJ, do you think the like the 16 through 20 would have been a lot more successful? Successful? Probably, for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. If they kept us all together, for sure. Because we all, yeah. like, matured. Like, we all matured at the right time. Like, my years, five, six, and seven, and eight, like, those years, was, I matured. And in the game, mentally, 
everything caught up at the right time. So I could only imagine if we were all still together versus just being, you know, the pair. Like even when me and Marv teamed up together, it was, we had so much fun in that little short span of Detroit. So the the place I want to go from there, it, it is kind of what happened in your years, you know, five, six, seven, eight after the Bengals, because you landed in Atlanta um, with Kyle Shanahan, uh, notably being a part of that run. He definitely, uh, definitely likes you because he had you with the 49ers in 2020. Um, you obviously also checked in with uh, Mike McDaniel in Miami. So making a lot of good impressions on that 49ers staff across the board. What's your relationship like with uh, Kyle Shanahan? Because obviously he's a really unique personality and looks at football in a really unique way. Uh, you're such a versatile player that I'm sure he really liked that in you and obviously a very smart player as well. That's always been a part of your package. Um, and on that note, have you heard anything about maybe stepping into quarterback over there? I know they're they're looking for someone while Brock Birdie hears, or heals and everyone else seems to be healing over there as well. <laughs> And uh, and they didn't make they didn't call me about stepping in for quarterback over there. But no, me and Kyle, we have a great relationship. Um, I, I love him. He's a great coach. He's a really really good good coach. He taught me a lot as a player and a person. Um, I mean, I can text him and we can chop it up about anything pretty much. He's a, he's a really to really be very, very intelligent, know how to get the best out of his players and know what pushes his players. So, it, was, it was fun. It was fun playing with him because he would always know how to get me to perform even better. Obviously made a Super Bowl with him as well, or a Super Bowl run. Obviously a very special time for you guys. Uh, obviously no, yeah, we yeah. we uh, we had fun. I mean, the 2016 year and then 2020 year. It was, um, we got some good work in together those years. Right on. Well, Billy, you're quiet again over there. I'm gonna let you ask another question. Uh, what do you? Yeah, but. But but before I let you go, Mo, I I love to to let it rip from a, a Long Island guy. Um, you know, I I Willie is a is a huge Big Ten guy. Actually, took a trip down to Columbus this year, my first Cincinnati trip. But he, he you know showed me the big stadium and we did the walkthrough. Um, could you talk a little bit about your time at, at Rutgers? Because being a kid in in the New York New Jersey area, um, you know, growing up around that time, it it, it was huge and the runs you guys had and and if you can kind of talk about. You know, I'm a huge hoops guy, but it, it, it kind of felt that you know breaking up the Big East for football was 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 a big uh, you know you know money type decision. But I, if you could kind of talk about the level of talent that's in Jersey one and and just kind of what it meant to to have Big East football and have guys kind of stay in the area. Guys kind of stay in the area. I mean, I love I loved it at Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers taught me a lot and helped me become. Me as a player, I still rely on a lot of the stuff that I learned there. And um, I mean, it was great playing in Jersey, um, being in in between Philly and New York. Um, a lot of people don't they don't give us credit. I mean, Jersey is small. It's it's it's, uh, it's not they don't say it's the greatest day or whatever it is, whatever it is. But I mean, I love that the people they love you. Especially when you're kicking ass, <laughs> so they they we when we were when we were good, they would they would they would show love, they would show lots of love. You know, you you see yourself. I mean, in college, you know, wasn't it wasn't big to be on billboards, but like they would they would put some of us on billboards and stuff, and it make you feel like, especially being in off the turnpike, like you know. Millions of people see you on the turnpike, going in up into up into New York all the time. So it's like, dang, that was that was a cool, cool experience. And then um, trying to keep everybody in New Jersey. That's the tough part. Everybody always leaves and goes elsewhere. So that was like, I mean, you can't blame them, but at the same time, it's like if 
all the talent that was in New Jersey were to stay home. Like Jersey would, Rutgers would, would easily be a top ten school, and a lot of people may be like, yeah, all right, whatever. But no, that's seriously the truth. Like for a span of, I mean, three to five years at a point in time, the number one player came out of New Jersey. And, like, y'all can look that up. That's facts. Like, Jabril Peppers, Mika Fitzpatrick, Rashawn Gary, like, all those cats. They're all from New Jersey. Like, and if they didn't go to Alabama, Michigan, <laughs> or Saquon didn't, go to, Saquon didn't go to Penn State, like, you know, like, could you imagine all those kids being at uh, Rutgers playing in the Big Ten? And that's, that's different than – playing out of Michigan or so it's just like you know Jared got out of town all he went to Tennessee and just all those different cats just going to different schools and you're just like man if those cats were able to stay home and you still can still can get that same recognition and it's an even a bigger market like, than where you are even though you know college football may be big at Ohio State maybe big at Penn State Ain't no market bigger than New York. <laughs> but they don't put two and two together. It's, it's still one of them. Someday someone's going to figure that out. I'm going to leave that up to Billy. Billy, your job is to figure out how to get Rutgers football up to the glory. You and Greg Schiano need to get on a conference call and get this worked out. Bring, bring Big East football back, baby. UConn, Rutgers, West Virginia, uh, Rutgers. Great, great times, great games. That was great games. That's why, I mean, it's all good. Like, I'll still forever be the all-time receptions holder in Big East, so I ain't tripping. There you go. <laughs> but, no, the Big East was fun to play in. It was always – it was always – you never knew, like, what type of game you were going to get, whether it was UConn, and UConn, West Virginia, um, Syracuse, Cincinnati, like, Pitt, USF. You could have won or lost any of those games, like, and that was like the crazy part about playing in the Big East. Like, like we'd go beat UConn, you kind of go beat West Virginia, West Virginia come kick our, our ass, and then we'll beat Pitt, and then Pitt, Pitt beat West Virginia. But it's like, it, it's like what? Or like Pitt, Pitt would be us, and then we'll lose to UConn, but we'll beat Cincy, and Cincy would beat all those teams, or like we'll beat, you know, it's just like. That's just how the Big East was. Everybody be eight and four. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's amazing. The Big East had to lead the nation in eight and four finishes for a long time. That's such a good point. But we, you've been so generous with your time, man. I just want to ask you one more question before you go. Um, I mean, we've talked a lot about your career, uh, your you know big three trio. We've talked about a good amount aj green obviously called it a career this offseason marvin jones is headed back to the lions i'm just curious uh what's next for most new is it just kind of focusing on this project in sierra leone is that you know fielding some calls to maybe come back and play football i'm just curious what's next for you well i'm just curious what's next for you well my phone's open i'm just waiting to see who is interested i don't necessarily know people know that but like i'm still able and actually better than I've ever been. And a lot of people say that when when they think they are, but I don't have to say it. I'll just show it whenever the opportunity arises. But I stack my days and I keep myself always prepared to do perform at a high level. So just know that I'm in incredible shape and in like incredible shape. Like almost type type of shape that I was in college, like two fifteen, running, running, yeah. So, but whoever whoever needs my assistance and my knowledge and my skill set and feels the value in me, they'll they'll make that decision. And I leave it up in God's hands. Like, like I know God has a plan and. If it's in the car for me to play again, I will. But nobody sees sees they can use me, and that's their loss. Because I know a lot a lot about this game, and I know how to play it. So 
I'm just waiting for the right team to play for. Well, there you have it. NFL GMs, if you're listening to the show, Mosa New is in college shape and he has a bunch of NFL experience. Give him a ring. He's ready to play some football. Uh, Mo, you've been such a great guest on today's show. Um, anything that you want to share before we check out? Share before we check out. Uh, oh, wow. Y'all are great, man. I appreciate y'all having me on. It was fun. Hey, I will say real quick, uh, uh, yeah, I will say team that really could have used you, especially in the playoffs, would have been the Bengals, man. Uh, you know, when TV goes down, we have most new. We're going to Super Bowl again, man. We're going to Super Bowl again, man. Hey, man. I, 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 I hit him up. <laughs> Duke Tobin, if you're listening, as you do, Duke Tobin always listens. We, 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 know you. we, see, the, we see your comments. Uh, well, Mo, thanks again for coming on the show. Um, have a great night, man. Uh, everyone, make sure to check out uh, the community center information as it comes out. We'll be sharing it. Uh, last thing before we go, we always say who day. So who day? We always say who day. So who day? Who day? Who day? Who day, baby? Who day, baby?